Hey everyone, this is Rocky from We Learn Chess, and this video is another installment in the Patterns of the Italian Game series. And I wanted to show a position that I got out of the opening. Uh, it was an anonymous game on Wii Chess. I think it was actually a bullet game, so we can't expect too much out of the. Uh, we can't expect too much here out of, uh, I guess, the intricacies of the move orders and things like that. But we got a Gioco piano, and here probably I think White is supposed to play c3 first, but I just castled. I played play d6. I played c3 now. And my opponent played a little bit of an inaccuracy with h6 first. I think it's okay. I mean, the computer points out that if you play knight f6 first, eventually you're, you're kind of reminding white that he's got to keep an eye on this pawn at some point. I mean, after, and black doesn't necessarily have to take this, but after something like this, um, you know, at some point he's got to play rook e1 or knight c3. And these kind of things might happen anyway, but I think it's just a little more forcing. Um, and there are some interesting points with with a pin that comes a little bit too early from black, but that'll have to be a different video, because um, that's cool as well. I'm just kind of picking up some of those tactical patterns too. So when my opponent played this, I did play for the central advance. He took, and we got this kind of typical situation. I developed, he played knight f6 now, and I played rook e1 just to kind of protect this pawn a little bit. I believe he castled here. And uh, now I did play h3. And I guess he, he could have tried to pin earlier, but again, I'll make that the subject of another video because that's uh, actually not uh, the correct move for black there, although a lot of people play it. So here, I felt like pretty good. I have a lean development. Um, you know, Black still has to solve a, a small problem there. I have a little more space. I have a nice central duo that's you know, covering a lot of squares. Uh, on the other hand, black has a lot of pressure on that center, so he's already looking here. And uh, with his next move, rook e8, he's also adding some more pressure to the center. Still, though, I felt like I had my center under control, so I just developed. Computer likes this move. Uh, and my opponent played for something that, I mean, I, I always kind of have this idea in the back of my mind, but I play this so-called central center fork trick as black, um, and my opponent did go for it. I felt like it should be, just kind of instinctively, I felt like it should be wrong for some reason, but I didn't really find the correct refutation of this in the game. So this is the position that I wanted to show you. Um, and just to kind of show you a, sort of a simplified version of what I'm talking about, if white were to play, um, let's say we get like a two knights and white were to play this, then black can actually go for the central uh, fork trick immediately. And white can respond in different ways, but just for the sake of simplicity here. Something like this is good for black because he's opened up both of his bishops, um, which is sometimes a little bit tough for him. He has a much less cramped position, so it's, it's a lot easier for him to develop uh, than normally. So that's why this is considered an equalizing move for black. But that's much earlier in the opening when white has less activity. Um, but what we saw in the game here, um, it's a little bit different. So the board's you know, got a lot, much, uh, a lot more pieces are out. Um, looking at different squares, and um, black still is lagging a little bit behind in development. So usually, if you try to go for some activity before you're developed, it can often backfire, and that's the case here. So can you see, um, you know, different ways for white to respond, and which is the best way? Okay, so in the game, um, I played what I thought was pretty decent. I played bishop takes f7, king takes, and then I took with the knight just because I wanted to. I felt like the reason for this, like. Okay, I'm, I'm giving up a bishop for a knight, which is usually, especially on an open board, is not always something that you want to go in for too easily, you know, without thinking it through. But I felt like here, uh, and also I have a structural defect, I have this isolated pawn that, you know, is either going to fall or at some point I'm going to have to push it and give up the square. So um, I felt like my compensation for those disadvantages was that I've already got three pieces over here, potentially four and five, depending on how things play out. And I have an exposed king with his natural defender, the, the knight on f6 is gone. So I felt like there's there's got to be some potential for attack here. I felt like this was OK. Uh, and the computer says it's pretty equal, I think. Maybe a slight advantage to white due to that attack. But both sides are fighting here. Um, but this is actually not really the way that the computer wants you to play. Um, computer says that there's an outright win here for white. So if you were looking at bishop takes f7, try to look again if you've already found it then. You'll see it in a second. Um, but the solution here is actually to allow this fork trick. And the computer points out that it's just too early for black to try this, um, given the changes in the position. Because here, 
White has this nice move, knight f6 check. And of course, you're not winning the queen, but you are winning the rook. Black might as well take that knight because he's losing the rook anyway. Uh, and this comes with a check, and now Black's got to make an uncomfortable decision where to put his king. If he goes to the dark square, you're always looking at potential batteries with the queen and the bishop. Also, you're potentially allowing the queen to come over with a tempo, which could be devastating. So I think slightly more accurate is here, but again, you also have checks along this diagonal. Sorry, and it's, you know, it's not great either way. And now the, the game is basically just over. And it's amazing you know, how helpless Black is here if white continues with the correct move, which is knight h4. And now there's really, is really, really hard for black to defend. All of his pieces are over in this quadrant away from the king. And white is quickly getting pieces over for the attack. Notice that the knight can't come over to defend because this pawn is annoyingly in the way. Can't come over here because the square is covered. The bishop can't come out to defend because the rook would just be lost. And remember that black's already down in exchange, so losing a full rook on top of that would be too much. Um, the bishop obviously can't come over to defend just yet because the pawn's in the way. Uh, and the bishop also, if it wants to come over and defend this rook, you've got to get the bishop out and move that pawn, which has a few moves. Also, the queen can't come over here to try to hit this bishop because the knight's got it, and the queen can't come over here to try to hit the knight because the queen's got this square. So there's really just nowhere for black to go to defend, and the king's just kind of sitting here by himself. Also, this back rank is constantly a problem. So really, the only way to continue here for black at all is to at least get rid of this pawn because now it allows maybe a knight to come over, or maybe the bishop can come over. Um, you know, this also just just getting rid of that central presence. It also allows for uh, g6 so that the bishop can come out this way if needed. But white just continues with queen e2, and basically saying to black, "I'm just going to triple up here, and what are you going to do about it?" And there's really nothing that he can do. I mean. Even if black tries to interpose on this e5 square with either piece, let's just say the bishop, for example, because um, one of the points there I think would be to not only cut the communication here, but also just to not threaten, but just try to simplify a little bit to alleviate some of this uh, basically unbearable pressure on the king here. Um, simplifying is not is a losing proposition by black anyway, because he's down material and these pieces aren't playing yet, so he's down even more material than it seems. Um, but it would seem like it would alleviate the attack, but it actually accelerates it because it gives up this h5 square, which was previously guarded by the queen. Now, of course, um, this bishop was pins, but actually the, probably that would be the only move to stop mate on h6. Uh, and here, you know, white finally would be able to get the bishop out, but even something like this. Uh, and, you know, we have a rook for a rook and a knight for a knight, so, and the pawns are equal, so it's actually just a queen for a bishop, which of course is not enough. And the attack rages on anyway. Um, because you've got this knight coming into a light square, which is really hard to defend. Um, maybe something like this, but still it's coming in. And eventually this uh, probably didn't even have to come in here first. Probably could take the open file first. I don't know. But in any case, uh, this is lost for black, obviously. So interposing doesn't work. So what else does black have? Um, if he tries to go ahead with this plan, um, and even something like, just to show you how helpless black is, like even if... Like let's say black tried to do this with the idea of hitting the queen here, and it looks like maybe he's saving his rook that way. Let's just say like white did nothing here. Black is still helpless because this idea doesn't even work. Queen g4, and then if he takes this rook, you've just got another rook here, and you're just still threatening mate in one, and it's really, really hard, if at all possible, to stop these threats. So there's just nothing really can be done. Let's kind of remove that a2, the a3 move because obviously... White's not going to do that. Let's say black goes ahead and does this. White doesn't even have to take this. He can just play queen g4. He's threatening mate in one. If the rook takes, you're still threatening mate in one. There's not really much else that can be done here. Um, I mean, a computer probably does some like crazy sacrifices like this, with the idea being that maybe you can get a knight over here to defend this square. So I think that's the idea there. Um, but it's not going to be enough here. There's just too much because... Remember, this square is constantly under under fire, too. So you get something like a knight here, which blocks the queen's communication there. Um, then maybe here, and it's, how are you going to defend the h6 square? You really can't. So um, there's there's just no way to defend here. It's just a way to potentially extend the game a little bit as a computer variation. So what black would have to actually do back here is to take this first, then go for the fork trick, um, which isn't really the fork trick anymore because he's had to give up some material. Uh, and here, um, white's got this check, and 
Um, here, obviously, he can't necessarily play the same way because the king side's not destroyed. Uh, also, there would be a fork there, potentially. Um, but he's got a really nice move in bishop e5. And uh, note that black can't play f6 here because we've got checks along this diagonal here. So something like this would be really bad for black. Um, now, black might be happy to see this move because, and I don't think I would play it necessarily as white, but um, it looks like, okay, well, maybe he can at least, uh, he grabs like a full bishop pair, alleviates the material, gets the queens off the board, and sigh of relief, at least he's not getting mated. But now look, how in the world is black going to solve this problem? And again, this bishop, which he failed to develop in the opening, is coming back to bite him. Um, and black's already threatening to just come down here and win it, so he's got to play basically this. Or maybe he could play c5, maybe that's even more accurate, just to later on it might actually make it easier for him. But, uh, okay, so here, white can't win it immediately, but how's he really going to stop it? I mean, there's so many moves that black has to make, like, he can't even go here. He's got to do something like this, and this, and this. And in the meantime, white can just start to maneuver this knight around. And it's going to be really hard for the for black to stop this idea of just the knight coming to one of these squares and just doubling up here. Uh, and if he defends against this stuff, you have to remember white's getting really active this whole time. So, And if he moves pawns around his king, it's going to create some weaknesses. At some point, white's got ideas of e6, and again, the bishop can't take. So it could be something like even here, maybe. Probably, maybe even here it's better, I don't know. Because again, bishop can't take, but then you get, this. yeah, this is better. Because now you're threatening to come in here, um, maybe shoot this pawn up here, and then you've got mate threats already on the king. Uh, on top of that, you're going to be able to come out here with tempo maybe, then come up here, depending on where the bishop goes. You can come into these weak squares potentially, you can come this way, um, and it's just it's going to be really hard. And remember, if this bishop ever comes off this diagonal, then immediately the rook comes in. So it's really, really difficult, even though um, black does have the two bishops, it's, it's not enough here, because he's down the exchange first of all, but also this is paralyzed, and this is paralyzed, so white's going to get a lot of activity. And that's only if um, Black had responded correctly after he made the incorrect move of trying this fork trick a little bit too early. So the, the whole lesson here was that this might be an interesting idea, but Black has to develop first because this back rank became a huge problem. The lack of development was a huge problem as well, even beyond the back rank. So I thought that was a pretty interesting puzzle. I didn't respond correctly in the game, but next time if that happens, and it is possible because these opening moves... I mean, I've seen this position before, and I'll probably see it again. So if you play the Italian game, you probably have seen something like this. Just keep your eyes out when Black has not connected his rooks, has not completed his development, and is trying to go for too much activity right away. There's probably some reputation for that. All right, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you around for the next one.